let's take a look at the second part of the Cold War. First, I'll remember from last time that we looked at the change in the presidency. It went from Roosevelt to Truman. And Truman comes up with something called the Truman Doctrine. This happens in 1947. What he wanted to do was to help com uh, sorry, countries resist communism. And his way of doing this is to give aid to these countries. Uh, and, and almost like a bribe, really. Um, the problem with this is that some countries that receive money from the Truman Doctrine are ruled by dictators and so aren't very good people to begin with. Uh, another plan that comes is called the Marshall Plan, which is founded by uh, George Marshall. Uh, he says, let's give money to countries so they don't become communists. So this is very similar to the Truman Doctrine. And what ends up happening is that the U.S. gives $13 billion to Western Europe to rebuild because after the Second World War, Western Europe sort of looks like this, where a lot of uh, damage has been done to buildings and factories and it's really affecting production. So between 1948 and 1952, Western Europe revives, the factories reopen, infrastructure is built, with the result that uh, a lot of things that are created in Western Europe are then sent all the way back to the United States. You can see them moving here. So this is great for the United States because they actually get something for giving all of this money to Western Europe. They get products from Western Europe in return. Now Stalin sees this. Stalin, yes, is still alive. And he just says, you're just buying support. He sees it as Western countries bribing um, the countries in Europe that he also wants to affect. So Berlin at this time, remember, is still divided up among Eastern and Western countries. And so Stalin decides for 11 months that he is going to blockade Berlin, which means that he's not going to allow the Western countries into their part of Berlin. So all of this becomes fenced in. However, the US and the UK decide that they don't like this and that they want to go into West Berlin. And so they have air airdrops or airlifts into Western Berlin for those 11 months. All right, so we see here, clearing off the allies. Also what happens during this time is that two organizations are founded and one is uh, benefits the Western Alliance and that is called NATO. And then a Warsaw Pact is also signed among communist countries forming a communist alliance. The Berlin blockade ends after roughly 11 months or, or a year. Um, Stalin really is just testing to see how far the US and the United Kingdom are willing to go to get into Berlin and to see if they are willing to risk it all. He sees that they're willing to risk it all he maybe is not so keen on all at war over this, and so he ends the blockade. What does end up happening, though, is that there is an arms race in which both the United States and the USSR here are trying to build up their armies and weapons. So they're getting bombs, guns, tanks, in case there is an all at war. And they also want to use this to dominate the world and to gain more countries to their side of their alliance. During this time, there's a, a senator named Joe McCarthy, and he starts something called McCarthyism, which in, really means that he's looking for communists within the United States and within the United States government. So he starts these uh, sort of witch hunts, I guess you could call them, trying to root out communists and having their lives ruined as a result. Um, so yeah, you can see him a lot on, on television and in photos and newspapers calling out communists both in uh, the government and elsewhere. Now Molotov, which is sort of the right-hand man of Stalin, also comes up with a plan called the Molotov Plan. And the Soviet Union is not as rich as the United States and can, therefore cannot offer money and, and loans in that way to revive the economies. But what they can offer is exclusive trade rights among the different Soviet countries. And so that's really what the Molotov Plan is. If you become communist or allow communist influence, then you have trade between the different communist countries, setting up like almost uh, a network, I guess. Uh, the last thing we want to talk about is salami tactics. And that is, oh, here's our salami right here. And if you've ever had salami before or seen it in a deli, you know that for pizza, they, they usually cut it off into little slices like this. And so we have our little slices there. And that's what the USSR tries to do to Eastern European countries is slice by slice they are trying to take over countries or influence the politics of that country so that they become communist and therefore in their camp and under their influence.